Rub up your engines! All right, everybody knows I'm not a big fanboy of Mercedes, but here is a cheap toy. He bought it two years ago for 2,800 bucks with a V8 engine, a convertible top, and about 120,000 miles. Then he sold it to a friend for 3,500. He had it for a while and put 30,000 miles, and the only thing the guy did was put tires on the car. Now you can see, it's an older CLK. They were beautiful cars, even today. The convertible hides on under here. It's all automatic. And yeah, he's got a twist tie holding on. I think that's funny. <laughs> and it is a V8, it's CLK 430. And of course, if you know anything about German leather, it doesn't hold up that well. <laughs> you could say goodbye, you know. He could fix it up if you really wanted to, but this is pretty much his ramp Mercedes. Yeah, the silver is coming off the mirror, but what the heck, it's funny. You can see the wood wasn't made all that well. It's cracking, so is the plastic, but listen to it. Is it shaking? No. And sure, it's got duct tape holding the plastic together. But that's just an air intake anyway. It still runs like a scalded ape. Now, it is a small car. It gets 22, sometimes 25 on the highway. For a big V8, it goes this fast. It's really not all that bad. And after all, it's kind of a toy. Although he was worried about that automatic convertible top, it wasn't working and he found out it's a hydraulic system. And the thing was just low on fluid. Now you gotta buy this expensive Mercedes fluid, blah, 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 put it in. So he carries a jug of it. And every once in a while, he fills it up. It would cost a fortune to replace the cylinders in it, but so it leaks a little. You put a little fluid in it. No big deal. Now why do I like this car? Well, the price is part of it. He paid so little for it, but here's the real reason. Stuttgart, this baby is made in Germany. It has an insanely reliable Mercedes V8 engine. When you consider how fast this thing is, how much fun, you can get 22, 25 miles a gallon on a highway, and really, it's not all that bad. And what does this engine have? It is a beautifully made timing chain designed V8 engine. You don't have to worry about stupid rubber timing belts. That's a problem when you buy old cars, especially old sports cars. If they got a rubber timing belt on them, almost all the ones with rubber timing belts have interference engines and you have to replace them at least every 100,000 miles. You buy a car that's 20, 30 years old and it's got one of those, you better change it or you can say goodbye to the car. Chain ones, better design, of course it costs more money to make them. Now considering the original owner paid 57 grand for this baby. <laughs> he paid less than three. Now I call that a deal, right? It's one solid built piece of German steel. Listen to the door. Does it sound flimsy? No, it doesn't sound flimsy. 145,000 miles on it now, but unlike a lot of the modern stuff, especially the stuff they make in the United States. You saw the one I made in Rhode Island, the guy bought one for like 150 and it was a pile of junk from the get-go. These ones made in Deutschland is another story entirely. This doesn't have nearly the electronic crap of the new ones. Yes, it has ABS, but Bosch has specialized in ABS for decades and it's a pretty bulletproof system on these things. This still has a regular power steering pump with hydraulic fluid, regular alternator, regular water pump, and the AC still works on this thing. He's got to add refrigerant once in a while, it leaks. Big deal. Now, one of the reasons he got such a good deal was because it was full of mouse crap inside. <laughs> you can see by the rotten part of the seat there, and I can still smell a little. It was abandoned in a garage with the top down, and the mice got in and made a home. But he cleaned that stuff off. The actual car itself, yeah. Now, an absolute fanatic would have to go through the interior, do it all over where the mice peed and bit things up, and spend a small fortune. But really, this is the ultimate rat Mercedes. It had mice in it. I guess you can't call it a rat mobile. You'd have to call it a mouse mobile. But just for kicks, let's hook up my scan tool and see the million things it's probably gonna say is wrong. Now the owner's here laughing, so we're gonna find out what the old computer says. At least by law, they still gotta have these OBD ports on them, so we'll plug it in if we can see it. Black on black is not easy to plug in. There, now it's plugged in. And we're going to Mercedes-Benz. It's got to be here somewhere. 
You think they go alphabetical, but they don't. All the way in the bottom. Boy, they didn't care much. They went to the bottom. Let's try automatic just for giggles. It's too old. It probably won't work, but what the heck. God, it's too old, so we're going to have to go to a manual selection. And here we go. We're picking manual. We're doing automatic scan. It's doing its job. It's an old vehicle, so it's going to take a while to go through all the 29 things. Now, we're waiting for it to scan. He does say that the transmission gets a little funky every now and then. That's typical with the mileage on this car, 145,000 miles. They call it lifetime fluid, you know how that goes. Everything wears out eventually. But from my experience with these things, it's something that you more or less live with with 145,000 miles. Rebuilding them is relatively expensive and it goes good enough that it's not gonna drive you crazy. If it ever did go out, you can get them rebuilt. They are, after all, rear wheel drive. This is a classic coupe got a big v8 in the front and rear wheel drive so it's got nice handling characteristics and rear wheel drive transmissions are always a lot easier to work on well now this won't connect to the ecu i find that with many older mercedes they often need specialized tools so we're going to try another scan tool the owner even went out and bought some scan tools from mercedes that work off your laptop but it won't communicate either so <laughs> we'll try number two on this this one link has got a tranny code scan tools doing it all scan of all the systems is going to take a while we're two percent now hilarious that this 300 dollars scan tool does what over a thousand dollars scan tool wouldn't do when it's done it comes out so then if you find you buy one of these hey get one of these anova 5160s 300 some bucks if it does what it's showing working pretty good so far it's going to it even knows that has a cd changer that's amazing and then so the top's going up here we go, it does it all by itself still. And check it out, the fender part isn't even electronic. You turn it mechanically, it opens up, and then it latches. That's cool. It's slow, we're only at 72% minutes later, but it's doing its thing. And man, I am shocked. It only has two codes. I am shocked. Readout fault memory of the ETC. That's probably why the other ones weren't working. And the other one is start enable of DOS not sent. He does notice that sometimes he turns the key and it doesn't start. He turns the key off, then he turns it and it starts breaking down a little. But he says it's been doing it for years, so what the heck, live with it. Yes, it does power trim, live data. Not all that bad. The short term fuel trim, here it's zero. It's only minus 3.9 on bank one long term. It's really not all that bad for a car this old. See the ignition timing is pretty stable. Still in really good shape. <laughs> I'm surprised. When we go back, so this code, that's the transmission, ETC is the electronically controlled transmission system. And he does say when it acts up, if he pulls over, shuts the car off and starts it up, it goes away. Well, that makes total sense because it can be a shorted or wire problem going to the electronic control module, the transmission, or it can be the transmission module itself starting to go out. But what the heck, it's a fun knock around car. It gets him where he's going. And then when it acts up, he just pulls over, turns it off, turns it back on again. The modules aren't cheap on these things, and I mean, really, we'll take it for a road test, see how it does. And it's got this one flipper wiper, like a race car, look at it go, Whee! And yeah, the seat belt system probably doesn't work anymore, the airbags are probably shot, and it's telling you you exceeded your service B by 8,600 miles. But this is a rat Mercedes, and really, considering it only had two little wacky codes on it, I'm amazed. Now, one of the reasons that it's not like the newer ones, since it doesn't have all that crazy electronics, it's not going to have a bunch of crazy electronics electronic codes. If this would have been one that's 10 or 15 years newer than this, I guarantee you it would have had a zillion codes, but at least these old ones, they didn't have as much crap to tell you of what's going wrong with the electronic crap. Big old V8 engine, so you step on the gas, it goes down the road. They're fast little cars. Being a Mercedes sports sedan, they do handle quite well. Not that I'd be using this thing for a drift car, but if you really wanted to, <laughs> you could. And of course, being a Mercedes Benz this size with four wheel disc brakes, you're not gonna have any problems stopping. Even though it's wet outside, we slam them on, we don't get any skidding. That ABS on a car that's 22 years old still works perfectly fine. Right in the curves, let's take it to our little drag strip in the sky here. See what it can do. Here's the little stop sign up ahead. Here we go. We'll come to a stop and step on the gas. It spins the tire a little. That V8. Listen to that. That baby's got plenty of guts left. There's no arguing with that. And sure, when I let go, I can feel a little downshift in the tranny, but really, you consider how old this thing is? You step on the gas.
Now there, you see, it's revving, but it's not taking off. So we're gonna do exactly what the guy said. We're gonna turn it off, and then we're gonna turn it back on again. And now when we step on the gas, look, it goes again. So we know there's something wonky with the computer and the transmission, but what the heck? You just gotta shut it off, turn it back on again. <laughs> and it's been doing that for years. Now I do have to say, if it was mine, and I would actually consider a car like this for 2,800 bucks, and you know, I'd throw the transmission away, I'd get a standard tranny from Deutschland to put it in. It would be a screamer then, with a standard transmission and this V8 engine, a little sports car like this, it'd be a joy to drive. And then we wouldn't have to worry about all that computer automatic transmission crap. After all, this engine is pretty indestructible. If you put an indestructible German standard transmission in it, you'd have yourself a little Panzer tank wagon of a car then. So here we go, a Mercedes that Scotty likes, except I would put a standard transmission in it. That's the weak point. It would cost a fortune to fix this particular one, but I mean, hey, it acts up, it's a toy, turn it off, turn it back on. After all, it is a rat Mercedes, or I should say mouse Mercedes, since the mice lived and pooped in it for a few years while it was abandoned. So now you know the truth about these beasts that they used to make in Stuttgart before they ruined them and started building them in other places where they weren't made by Germans who cared about what they were doing. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.